What's up guys? What's up cycling fanatics? Frequent viewers of my channel will know that I've recently completed the crazy cross country challenge. A 571 kilometer non-stop ride through all 12 provinces of the Netherlands. In this video I'm gonna answer your questions that you have sent me on Instagram and YouTube that I did not answer in the video. So I'll talk about the bike, why did I choose that bike, I'll talk about my nutrition, uh, if there was a moment where I wanted to give up and if the whole thing was actually harder or easier than I expected. Hey guys, my name is Jasper and I make cycling videos. And as I said recently, I did this crazy ride through the Netherlands and a company called Koersplaat sent me over this picture. This is a uh, representation of my, of my ride. 571 kilometers, I did it in 17 hours and 35 minutes, averaging 32 and a half kilometers an hour. You can edit this stuff, change colors and everything. This is a little office detail that I just put up on the wall and it's awesome to have one of these accomplishments on the wall while I'm editing my other videos. This is the actual video that you might have seen or maybe not. If you want to see the video first, go check it out. Click up here somewhere and the link obviously is going to be in the description. By the way, uh, Koersplaat have sent me this for free but they're not paying me to say anything but they will give you guys a discount on uh, your uh, course plot. Just go uh, to their website and use code CYCLINGFANATICS. You get a 10% discount and the code is valid until the end of December. Go check it out. So with all the questions you guys have sent in, uh, here we go. I'm gonna answer some of those. First questions are from Instagram. So one question is about this picture. Shvedovdi wants to know what's on my back. If you watch the video, you'll see that I have these uh, bags. What? How do you call it again? Um, musette, musette, musette bags. And sometimes I would grab food from the car straight away. So I would get a bottle or uh, or my bars or food, whatever. Sometimes they would put it in the bag and stand next to the road, and then just give it to me, and I'll just come by and grab it. And then I'll put the bag on my uh, on my shoulders and grab everything I need from the bag. Just like they do it in the big races, like the pro teams do the same. So Dean Powell wants to know, did my feet get sore from pedaling that length of time? Luckily they didn't. I had no issues with my feet at all. I've been using these shoes for, I don't know, four years, three, four, three years. So, and the shoes are still really good. Uh, I'm using these Shimano. RP9, like an older model. They're semi custom, so they go in the oven, they mold to your feet a little bit, and for some reason they fit me well. I have very narrow feet, very narrow feet, so I have a hard time finding shoes that actually do fit me very good, but these are okay. And I didn't have any issues, luckily. How do you keep yourself motivated? Asks uh, Brian Cook Food. Well, in this occasion, it was actually pretty easy because there were so many people riding with me. Every time somebody joined me, dude, this was a, an amazing boost already, just to keep on going. So that was awesome. For the rest, if I do long rides, I go in the zone. You know, you start pedaling and, and you just, Either you think about nothing and you just keep on going or I think about everything I need to do. There's always so much on my mind, I just go through options, I go through video ideas, I go through stuff I need to arrange, all that stuff. So I actually try to get things done in my head. Mate NGY, how could you get used to this bike so fast and uh, if you had a mental breakdown, when was it? Um, I had the bike about two weeks before I did this big ride so it is very short but the minute I got on the bike it just felt good you know this bike felt really good as soon as I got on the only thing I felt it was a bit short so I did increase the stem length uh, so I put a longer stem on the bike I put the saddle a bit forward and it just felt great so I, I was Pretty confident that I wouldn't get any any big issues on this ride because of the new bike. Maybe other issues, but not really specific on the bike. Tyne Donkers wants to know how to prevent a, a sore lower back on a ride this long. I did expect to have a lot of 
soreness in my lower back especially but for some reason nothing i had a sore neck because your head is really you know you're forward on the bike so your head starts to become very heavy but my lower back was fine i don't know why but i had no issues at all so i think in general it's important to do some some core stability some some ab work some lower back exercises to keep your core strong and this will really help you uh, on the on the bike oof oofty yeah did anything uh, not go according to plan that day and uh, what would you do different the next time a big aussie fan aussie 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 oi 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 well some stuff did go uh, didn't go according to plan as you've seen in the video you know i got lost uh, I, well i didn't get lost but i lost the car the follow car a few times but luckily i was most of the times i was topped up on uh, on nutrition so that was okay of course we missed a few exits and a few turns uh so we missed a few turns but you know you just turn around and you take the right exit and uh, i didn't have any flats uh no big issues really so um no not really everything went pretty well i i planned this to the details so uh that's probably big of the biggest factor here if i would do anything different next time i might have might do like a complete route uh for the car so really check if they could go anywhere where i was riding but this is so much extra work that i didn't do it this time i just didn't have the time to do that but if you really want to increase that level of of uh, preparation you could tom obdam wants to know how i made the route well i i created this route in strava which i sh kind of showed in the video and then i i threw a uh, a question on instagram for people to uh, to improve the route where uh, you know around where they live because obviously there's a lot of you guys cycling fanatics who live in the netherlands and you guys know the ins and out of your hometown you know and so people from Groningen they would tell me oh you should go this and this way people from Breda told me not to go on that road because it's a dirt road and to go uh, left or right because there were less traffic lights and all that stuff so I, I got a lot of information from the local cycling fanatics and that really improved the entire route and uh, that really helped me out a lot Rodrevino, what was it like mentally? Mentally, what was it like mentally? Well, I th I think because of the stuff I did uh, in the past, big challenges already. I I can really put my mind in a certain mode. I just switch on beast mode, <laughs> uh, and I go for it and I, I, I just wouldn't stop until I got to the finish that's what my 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 mental uh, state was that day and uh, if you prepare for a very big challenge you know it might be easier and at the end this was the case a lot of people are asking me if it was harder or easier than I thought well physically it was actually easier well, maybe not easier because I did get a lot of saddle soreness and a sore neck. It was pretty bad. Uh, but my legs were really good. So my legs were actually uh, better than I thought. And mentally, because I had so many riders with me, you know, I could chat uh, to a lot of riders uh, during, uh, during the day. So it was very easy and the, the hours were, were passing really fast. Also the weather was pretty good. So that makes a big difference. Same guy wants to know why I didn't use one of my own bikes. Well, one thing is for big projects like this, I just want to do the full package. I want to make it awesome. Just like in the Cobble, uh, uh, Cobble KOM attack of Paris-Roubaix, we got a few different bikes. So also for this project, I just thought it was really awesome to get a high-end, really cool bike, a new bike. Besides that, Cannondale was really supporting me in a different way. The footage I got and the amazing shots from the third person, from the car and all that stuff uh, is, is because I had a cameraman and uh, this was arranged by Cannondale. So that's really awesome. Uh, it's something that I would not have if I would have done it on my own bike. So Cannondale didn't pay me, uh, but they did support me in this challenge. So that's, you know, one of the things how I can make these projects to a really awesome 
complete thing. And besides that, the System 6 is a really cool bike as well. I still have it right now and I'm still riding it. It's an awesome bike. So yeah. Niall, Ga Niall Glauser, are you going to do something similar again? If yes, definitely pass through Switzerland or Germany. Well, I, of course I want to do another challenge but my challenges don't always have to be like super long rides it's not gonna be the next challenge is not gonna be 700 kilometers or a thousand kilometers a challenge can also be you know to get the KOM on a one minute segment or to get a sprint PR or whatever I, I don't know yet maybe a gravel event a mountain bike race I'm up for anything and I'm, uh, I'm just keeping my eyes, op eyes open for cool stuff. Besides that, Switzerland and Germany would be awesome to ride in. And Marcel Mertens, hey Jasper, I'd like to know, did you do pacing based on heart rate or power zones? Uh, ma mainly on power. I had a discussion with Evan Stevenart, an ultra endurance specialist. Uh, I made a podcast video about that uh, discussion and his tips and tricks for this video you might want to see it up here or the link will be in the description to see the full video and he explained what is important and he gave me tips on how to um, base this whole thing based on power so i did base it on power and a lot of times i was riding with other people and i would just you know be in their draft as much as i could and i would just tell them how fast i would you know how fast i could go and then on my power I would be riding maybe 200, 220 watts which would be uh, really good for me for a long time like this. My food strategy, I did explain this pretty extensive in the actual video so go check it out. Nicole Dusum, do you prefer to do a long ride like this when the weather is hot or when it's cold? Uh, and what was the weather like during this ride? The weather was like not hot not cold it was in the middle so in during the day i had a rather short period of time where i was wearing short bib shorts and short arms but for the most time i was wearing arm sleeves leg warmers and a vest and a neck gaiter because my neck got cold and also in the end my neck got sore so that's really the reason why i was wearing that as well but if you ask me i would pre prefer to do this in warm weather but if it's anything be above like 30 degrees it's actually going to be harder and you need to drink a fair amount of liquids more so that's going to make the whole thing a bit more difficult but if i would say above 30 degrees or around freezing then yeah i would go i would go for the hot weather uh Dao Palma, how would you compare this cannondil to your aeroad uh, can you really feel the difference between the two the Cannondale and the Aeroad? It are actually different bikes because the Cannondale System 6 uh, Super, Super 6? Super 6, I always get confused. The Super 6 is more of a all-round racing bike, climbing bike and the, the, the Aeroad is more a high-speed aero bike but I think they are, they're really similar actually. They handle very similar although um, Big difference might be the disc brake versus non-disc brakes, which does change the feel of the bike, in my opinion, because of the through axles and stuff, it gets more stiff. Uh, also, the wheels that I use in either bike are very different, which makes it different, difficult to really compare it exactly. But uh, I think both bikes are really similar. They're both very, very good bikes. E Dams, this is my aunt. Uh, what are you thinking when you're on your bike? Or are you just concentrating on cycling? Well, it depends on a long ride like this. I can think about anything. I can think about holidays next year or two years ago. I can think about the next video project that I'm going to do. I can think about, you know, what I'm going to do with Sam the next day. If I'm going to teach him how to ride a bike with one hand or if I would go to the pump track with him. <laughs> I can think about what my next flight would be for work or the next video that I'm gonna edit or YouTube algorithms or thumbnails or my girlfriend or I can think about anything if I'm doing structured training usually I'm really concentrated on the training itself so I am really watching my power numbers and my heart rate and I can be completely zoned in or zoned out I don't know into my 
like my my body my feeling of the bike and my computer and my power numbers so it depends but on this ride i was just talking to everybody having fun watching uh, nature you know having a look around and enjoying this whole experience really and also check out the route if i was still going in the right way arson Ar Arsonioter, Arson, Arsonia, Arsonia Arthur. Do you think using a different type of saddle would have helped by creating different pressure points? Maybe, uh, yes, but if you have the right saddle, I think you should just stick with it and use that saddle and, uh, and don't change it. Maybe if you have two bikes, you know, you could switch and if they both have a different saddle, then that might help you. I have to say that uh, uh, like one day after the challenge or two days after, I got on my Fuji which has a different seat and I didn't have that much issue issues with, with that but when I would get on the Cannondale with the same seat then I would feel more pain actually so it might might actually work to have different saddles on, on your bike Charlie Warrock what clothing kit did you use the bibs shirt and vest well that's the Sirocco uh, cycling kit so there's a link in my description if you want to check it out. Sirocco just put me in a full kit of them. They have a premium bib shorts and jersey right now, which are very good. And of course, you know, I'm wearing those glasses all the time. So that's, you can find it in the description. Johan Novix, did you even, <laughs> did you even stop for a piss? Uh, yes, I did stop for a piss quite a few times, but my total stoppage time in this entire day was only, 25 or 30 minutes if I remember correctly so when I had the piss I would wait for a traffic light or when we would miss an exit or whatever I use that moment when I'm already standing still to take a piss and in the in the Netherlands it's not allowed but you know most cyclists just you know we go next to the road find a tree and we take a piss. Charlon, Charlon Sinet, you have tips for somebody who wants to do the same thing my tip would be to watch that video and I will go through anything. I will go through a lot of things that you uh, you can think of and uh, a lot of tips on, on a challenge like this. Faisal, what was the best food that gave you a good boost of energy and how often did you eat during the trip? I would eat, I was eating all day long. Watch the video and you'll see me with food in my hand almost the whole time. Uh, and this was very important. So I'll talk about everything I ate and how much I was eating in the video. And this was really the food that helped me out. I was using Martin and some uh, some of the food that I used to that I'm really used to while I'm riding. So check out the video and uh, I'll get you more details. Aaron Cruz wants to know why did I start at seven in the morning? Uh, because in this way I would do the most difficult hours in the dark and uh, would you do the same thing the next time or would you do it different and how was riding in the dark when you were tired I understand what he means because by starting at 7 o'clock in the morning that means that I would arrive somewhere in the night or maybe even 7 o'clock in the morning the next day because I had a 24 hour limit but I really like to have my night sleep and we traveled to the south the day before and I'm not sure what time we actually went to bed but it was like 11 or 11.30 and we woke up around 6 so that means I already reduced my night sleep to about 6 hours which is still okay but if I would start at a, I don't know, crazy early time like 3 o'clock in the morning which would have me end uh, around 10 o'clock uh, in the night for example I would just feel crap to wake up that early. I just don't like waking up that early. So I would prefer, I prefer to stay in bed and have a normal night's sleep and still start early, but not that early. So I actually started at the time that it got light. So I would start in the light. I didn't need any lights on the bike uh, and it was all good. And the only riding I would do in the dark was at the end of the day. And yes, I was tired back then, but I had some really good lights on the bike, which is very important. And I knew that at the end of the ride, I was going through the north of the Netherlands, which in general is pretty quiet. And especially during the night. So, you know, the roads were dead, absolutely dead. Nobody on the road, you see that in the video. 
and I was uh, riding there by myself, so it was fine. I didn't have any issues. I would do the same thing the next time. Luciana, Brunette, how did I deal with saddle soreness? Yeah, I, it's just something you have to go through. I did get a lot of saddle soreness and I, it was painful, but uh, I used some, uh, some uh, bib cream, you know, to, uh, to, to prevent it a little bit, but it's more the sitting that starts to hurt and not so much the, uh, the, the scathing, so um, it hurts. Mathieu de Delcourt wants to know if I stop at my uh, did I stop at my place halfway? No, I didn't. I didn't do that because of because Evans uh, told me not to. So that was a good tip from him. Okay, I have some more questions on uh, on YouTube. Are you going to attach the bike trailer and repeat the trip with my kids? I don't think so because uh, Sam used to be okay in the trailer, but now he starts to you know, get bored after half an hour or an hour. So um, I'm not doing as much riding with the, with the trailer behind the bike as I was before. Somebody woke up. Kijk, zeg maar hallo. Oh, yeah. Heb je lekker geslapen? Yeah. Ja. Ja, eh? Ik ga jou even naar beneden brengen. Papa moet nog een paar vragen beantwoorden. Oké? Okay? Yeah. Ja. I'll be back. A few moments later. Jenki Bora, did uh, riding with other people help you? And did you go faster and harder when you were riding with others? Much love from Turkey. Hey, cheers back to Turkey. Sometimes it did, but sometimes it didn't. Some guys, you know, I was drafting. When you're drafting, in general, it gets pretty easy. So sometimes I was behind riders and we were doing at good speed, 35k an hour, which would, I would probably not do by myself, but I was in their wheel and I was like, okay, this is really easy. So then we would actually be able to go faster, but if I would be by myself, I wouldn't be able to go faster. One thing I really noticed is every time there was a new guy who would join the group, and this new guy went to the front and he wanted to do his work you know so he went pulling and it was awesome but every time there was a little pitch up for a bridge or a little climb or a little hill they would you know step on it and i would have to shout to the front like yo slow down easy up the hill because i wanted to take out all these spikes of power because this would really you know get me tired if every two hours there's a new guy and he and every time he accelerates hard out of a corner and he goes a little bit harder up the climb than he was doing on the flat i would have to accelerate out of that corner and i would have to push a lot of power up the hill for those two hours but then there's another guy and another guy and another guy and i would just be you know pushing hard out of every corner the whole day and climbing up every little bridge uh, pretty hard so i i really had to sort of control the pace on, on these bars but, you know, as soon as I, I let these guys know, like, okay, accelerate slow out of the corner, go easy uphill, keep pedaling downhill, then, you know, they adjust and they did it perfect. And we actually went a lot faster than when I would do it by myself. How did you plan out your ride to know uh, which roads were okay to ride on? I used Strava, but I, I did the, the function of the shortest route because it saved me like 100 kilometers. But this actually put me on a couple shitty roads, like dirt roads or uh, uh, back roads, which were kind of crap. So there should be something like a in-between option, which I don't think there is. But uh, yeah, this this I didn't really go through every single road. But like I just mentioned before, uh, the local riders helped me out a lot. Simon uh, wants to know: Would it be easier or harder if there were big climbs on the route? because then you would be able to stop pedaling and recover. Well, actually climbing is always, I think, always harder than flat riding because on the climb you actually have to push harder. So what happens is when you do a route with climbs versus a flat route is on the route with the climbs, it's more like an interval. You're pushing hard and then you're relaxing. You're pushing hard and then you're relaxing. And an interval is most of the time, it's harder in general, in total, than a long steady effort. If you can go steady from beginning to the end, then that's the most efficient way to get to your destination. Alive, was there any point in this trip where you just wanted to give up? If so, what motivated you to keep on going and how much of a mental game is a long distance cycling? 
P.S. I love your vids. Keep them coming, man. Thanks, man. Um, like I said, it actually went pretty good. I never really had a moment that I would give up. And I think I had a really good day. And maybe I was lucky. Um, so, I don't know. But it was the biggest, I think the biggest challenge of a ride like this, of a very long distance ride, is the mental game. Because you are sitting on your bike for 18 hours or longer. And so you really have to be strong mentally. So that was a big thing. You know, my saddle soreness did get pretty bad. And some point I was like, oh, I hope it doesn't get any worse than this because then it's really gonna be a struggle. Everything went well and I finished. LS Ray Se Sevilla. Do you think starting late in cycling, um, for example, starting seriously at 20 years old, Badly affects on how well you perform in crits in the upcoming years. Yeah, of course, because the experience you have when you're riding these races will make a big, big difference. Just like I was having a very hard time from the start when I was racing Criterions because I didn't know the tactics. I was very strong, but I didn't know what I was doing. So yes, it's going to be a very big difference. And usually the smartest rider wins, not the strongest. Zondo says, thanks a lot for such an inspiration for all the cycling community, community. Shout out from Brazil. Shout out back to Brazil. Thanks, bro. Uh, well done, Jasper, says Adam Olos. Did you have any fear that the sponsor bike would not be that comfortable as your own, especially on your longest ride ever? How was your calorie intake plan? Well, the sponsor bike is the Cannondale and... Um, I was pretty confident about the Cannon deal as I discussed before because I just felt right. The bike felt nice from the start. And I think when you're riding a new bike or you're riding a new set of wheels and they just feel awesome, like, oh, they feel just normal, they feel nice. I don't feel weird when I turn into a corner. I don't feel strange when I brake hard. That's when a bike is good. That's really what I go for in a, new, in a different bike. When it feels... You know, when I just step on the bike and it feels right straight away, then I know the bike is right for me. Kasper Hamburger wants to know, do I have a specific training schedule? What was the longest ride as a preparation for this? Well, I just made a video about my training schedule over summer, which was not specific for this challenge, but I know for sure that it helped me a very big amount. So I'll link the video up here and in the description which goes over my six week training plan, which greatly increased my aerobic motor. And that's very important for a long ride like this, is to be able to ride on your aerobic power a lot. You don't really have to do a super long ride as preparation. My longest ride was like maybe 200 max, uh, which is probably long enough. I didn't do a lot of long rides for the last year actually. My friend FTW1207 is very proud of me. Thanks, man. <laughs> My cycling fanatic from Liverpool, what up, man? Doc Pew Pew wants to know, did you hang on the car for just a sec? I did. I did hang on the car for just a sec, but only one second. Uh, Jonas Shabatu. Shatu. Shatu. Was it as expected, as you expected, in terms of fun, road, and how hard was it? I didn't know what to expect because I had never done a ride like this. So it was bigger than I expected. And the fun was very much more than I expected because of so many riders and because of the, you know, all the pieces fell in place and it went so well. It was just an amazing experience. So it was actually better than I expected. Eric Arnold, did you fuel much differently than previously long ride? No, I was just fueling similar, but I made sure that I was topping off with fuel the whole time. Top notch. Would uh, would butt be sore no matter what saddle, Jasper? What did you use? I think so. Yeah, I used the what is it Pro Logo saddle, which is actually standard on the Cannondale. I was doubting about putting my own saddle on it, but I was riding with this saddle and it felt alright, so I just figured, nah, I'll just leave it on, <laughs> and it was okay. It did get sore, but I think any saddle will get you soreness. Alexander Furbig wants to know why I didn't pick a endurance bike, why I picked this racing bike. So the System 6 or the, the, the Cannondale Super 6 is a real racing bike. Well, what I did to add some endurance to the bike is I mounted 28 millimeter tires, uh, tubeless, and I reduced the tire pressure a lot. So I was riding on four and a half bars, 
which actually made it nice and smooth. So the tires make such a big difference that you can really increase or decrease the, st the stability and the smoothness of your ride by your tire pressure. So um, I still wanted to have a fast bike, so I don't mind being low at the front. So the Cannondale is pretty low at the front and I wanted to have a nice bike and I really prefer those racing bikes. Uh, so yeah, that's that's why I went with the, with the Super 6. Jim the Mix wants to know if I would have done it, if I would have completed it, if I was completely solo. I'm pretty sure I would. It would have taken me a little bit longer maybe, but I'm pretty sure I would have made it. And that wraps up your questions guys. These were all the questions on, on Instagram and YouTube that you have sent me. And if you have any other questions about this challenge or about anything else, you can leave it in the comments and maybe I'll do another Q&A video or I'll answer the questions in the comments. Just know that I will, re I actually read all of the comments and I try to, ex to, uh, to reply to most of them. So thanks a lot for watching. And if you like the content, please uh, consider to subscribe to my channel. Just hit that little bell notification straight away so you get a notification when I post a new video. And I will be posting new videos. I'm going to post about gravel riding pretty soon. So stay tuned. I'm going to see you next time. See ya!